Welcome to the first of 10 Q&A sessions that will follow this week. And let me congratulate you on the conditional acceptance offer that you received. And for those of you that have already completed grade 12, your final acceptance offer. We are so excited to be hosting you here this evening. So with me, I have my colleagues from the Division of Student Recruitment. Alongside me, I have Boykutsa Johnson, who is sitting next to Eleanor Brink. In studio, we also have Bungiwe, who is keeping a close eye on the WhatsApp chat. So please do send through your questions to us um, on the number on, on the screen, um, which will be shared throughout the session. So this evening session will be conducted in English, but if my colleagues should speak in Afrikaans or Isikosa, it will also be repeated in English. And while I'm on the topic of language, allow me a moment to tell you a bit more about the university's language policy. On the 1st of January this year, we adopted a new language policy, which has three foundational principles. That is that SU regards multilingualism as a resource and that language should broaden access and enhance success. Now, multilingualism is both institutional and individual, and it is a means to promote inclusivity and also to um, provide an appreciation for the value of diversity. But it extends beyond just creating spaces for the use of multiple languages in academic, administrative, social contexts, or also an individual's willingness to learn multiple languages. So at SU, we believe that uh, multilingualism reflects an attitude and a, a mindset that we want to foster within our campus community. And this is something we put into practice in ceremonial occasions like the welcoming event for the first years and graduation ceremonies. So these are events where multiple languages will be used. But this evening, we are here to discuss some Q&As. So let's dive into the very first question for this evening. All right, so the first question we have is, do you have any advice for prospective students preparing to transition from high school to university? Now, Eleanor, do you have any advice for our prospective students? Yes, thank you, Anjali. Good evening, everyone, and thank you for listening to us tonight. That is a very important question. So, prospective students, you should know that when you come to Stellenbosch University, you will possibly be one person in a space of 35,000 students. In a classroom, you might be one in 300, where currently you are one in 30. So you know all of your classmates when you come to university, that's not necessarily the case. So it is important to um, really remember that when you come to university, attend your classes. Yes, even the eight o'clock in the morning classes, and Angie, I think it's so easy to fall in a trap here. If I'm going to miss one class, it's okay. Next, you miss set two classes. And before you know it, you are so behind on your work and overwhelmed with, um, you know, getting on, on, um, on par with what you need to do and what you need to know and falling behind. And obviously with all of that comes anxiety, time management, etc. cetera. That um, gets me to the second point is definitely time management. Um, when you are at school, you possibly only use one resource or source to get your information. When you come to university, there might be several sources that you need to use to get your information for specific topics. So time management is very important. Even though we encourage students to have a balanced student life, so it must not be all just about academics, it's extremely important for that time management aspect. Attend your classes. If you're done with classes for the day, go do your homework or assignments or uh, quizzes that you need to do. Get that done before you continue to the social or cultural or sport activities that you need to do. 
Thanks, Eleanor. And if, if I may just add to that as well, um, it's very important that you are aware of the different kinds of support services that will be available to you on campus. I mean, no one really intends to fail or to struggle, but from time to time we all do. So there are various support services available for students. We have the Center for Student Counseling and Development and um, they are there to really guide you on your mental health and your academic journey. And then lastly, as the saying goes, all work, no play. But in this case, as much as you will be here to work hard and be focused, you also have to um, invest your time in your relationships and your networks to have a well-balanced and a holistic uh, student life. All right, the next question is, how does the role of the parent change in the life of the student? So, Eleanor, this one is directed more towards the parents. Why would you say? Yes, and uh, Angelique, the, um, the question does make me laugh a bit mm -hmm. because I think students, prospective students, wait 18 years to get this news of, at last, you are the client of the university. So for parents, this is now when, um, according to the Poppy uh, Act, um, the student will become the client of the university. Therefore, we are not allowed to send results, etc., to the parents, but that will go directly to the students. And I remember as a student myself, that was one of the most interesting conversations around the dinner table when your parents asked for your results of the first semester. And you know that you've received your results, but you don't want to share it with them yet. Um, but I do think even though the student becomes the client or our, our main client, it's so important for, this, for the parents to still stay involved in this journey of your child. Even though they might uh, study out of the house or they might leave the province to come and study at Stellenbosch University, it is so important to stay involved. Ask them about their assignments, their workload, um, and support them and encourage them with this journey, even though it's extremely important at the end of the day to be a successful uh, 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 graduate from a university. Like we mentioned earlier, this is a time where they also need to network and where they need to make connections for their future and really experience university for what it has to offer, not just the academics. So keep involved, but also encourage them to be part of the inside and outside of the university. That's so true, Eleanor. And if, if I may just add as well, you know, we are living in a, a day and a time where uh, many people spend time scrolling and scrolling through social media, and especially young adults. And with this may come a risk of envy, regret, or a little appreciation for your own life because um, you slip into a mindset of always comparing yourself to others. So it's important to teach mindfulness, to guard against that comparison, to value um, the life that you do have. And also maybe a little bit of kindness will go a long way because uh, students are definitely going to experience some or other kind of disappointment along their journey. Um, it might be, you know, challenging for them to adapt to a new academic environment, but also they may be going through their very first breakup or their very first uh, failure on a test or exam. So instead of going the I told you so route, um, the kindness is really what, what they'll need to support them on their journey. Okay, so the next question is now, what happens after the release of the NEC and IEB results? So, Boyko, so this is an admissions question. Can you help us with this one? Thank you, Angie. So, um, guys, please note that Stellenbosch University um, receives the NEC and IEB results on an annual basis and then after we have received them we will upload them on the portal verify them and then that's when we will send out the the final offers I'm sure you can't wait for that time and then um, afterwards um, that's when we will start issuing out final offers so our plan or timeline is that we will issue out these final offers within 24 
hours of uh, after we've published the results. And then um, please note that the students will then receive their final offers and will be, will be given three days to accept or decline the offer on the student portal. And if you're una unable to do that, unfortunately, your final offer will expire on the system. So you must make sure that you keep yourself updated with all the information that we'll send you on the portal and also check your email so that you are up to date and then for those of you that have already received your final offers you can relax we will send you further information next year about the reg registration date thank you okay great so your final offer will be based on your final metric results so make sure that when those final offers are released that you accept them as quickly as possible okay what happens if once the results are available for applicants following an international curriculum? So, Boykutsu, this is a similar question, but it's just pertaining to students who follow an international curriculum. Okay, so for students that are following the international curriculum, like the Cambridge or the international baccalaureate systems, what a word, <laughs> they will have to send us certified copies of their final results, and then we will review their results and then start with the admission process. Okay, so as soon as the copy of your certificate of final results available, we can finalize your admissions process. Okay, next question is, what if I have not received an acceptance offer for my preferred choice? Is there still a chance? Hmm. Ooh, Angie, that's an interesting one. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so you will be placed on the waiting list, but then the faculty will then get back to you if there is available space for you. So um, unfortunately, guys, that's how the system works. You will have to wait. And then if there is available sp an available place, then we will let you know. And for if, it, if there's nothing, then you will have to consider your second or third options. OK, so is there still a chance? Well, that depends on whether there is still space available. Okay, what is the process of reconsideration next year? Okay, so reconsideration is not applicable in all faculties. Um, so if you want to be reconsidered for the program of your choice, you would have to contact the faculty administrator and then they can reconsider you if there is available space again. So um, as you note know, that we, I mean, space guides might be limited, so we need to be realistic. So um, it depends. Then if, they, if there's space, you will get in. If there's nothing, unfortunately, you'll have to move on. All right, so that's pretty much the same answers, a similar answer to what we yes. previously had. It really depends on the number of spaces available. Okay, next up, can you please explain the process for those who received residence placement and for those who are still waiting on a response? Eleanor? Also quite uh, a difficult one. So I think it's important for students to remember on campus, we only have places for about 200 first year. So that is approximately a thousand, uh, a thousand beds for, um, sorry, 2,000, a thousand beds for male residents and a thousand for female residents. So for that reason, uh, normally we get about 10,000 or 8,000 applications uh, for residence placements per year. So for that reason, it's also quite competitive. If you haven't heard from residence placement at this moment, um, it will be finalized by the end of October, as well as the specific residence that you um, are placed in. So if you haven't heard anything yet, you will know by the end of October if you received place in res or not. If you didn't receive place in res and you wish to be put on a waiting list, you can um, ask to be put on a late waiting list from the 1st of November. Again, you will go online at www.martis.com. You will go to accommodation and then ask to be placed on a waiting list. Um, and otherwise, I would recommend that students then, if you didn't get placed in res, also start looking for private accommodation. Again, there is private accommodation options on our website. If you wish to get more information regarding private accommodation, again, you can visit www.martis.com. Look under accommodation. If you scroll down completely on the page, 
there will be the private accommodation information. Okay, there you have it. Residence placement is still ongoing until the end of October. And if you are not placed, look out for that waiting list um, on the 1st of November. So a follow-up question, Eleanor, is what is a cluster community and what does it aim to achieve? So this question seems to also be relating to our PSOs. Can yes. you tell us more about that? Yes, so um, normally students that uh, stay in rest as well as students that stay privately or commute to campus daily automatically get, uh, uh, gets put into a PSO, which stands for Private Student Organization. And that forms uh, obviously a cluster with uh, residents on campus. So that gives students the opportunity that doesn't stay in rest on campus to also partake in the social, cultural and sport activities that we do offer. So um, it gives a student that stays privately or commute to campus daily also the opportunity to have a holistic student experience and normally within these clusters this is obviously you know uh, doing uh, social activities with different races uh, uh, sport activities fun activities charities etc so you will be automatically put in a pso Please make sure that when you are putting a PSO to form part of this PSO, it really helps students to make friends, to feel welcome at campus, to feel part of a community. And that is the big reason why we have these clusters for students and especially for students staying privately and commute to campus daily. Thanks, Eleanor. I do believe that here at Stellenbosch University, we've really focus on creating that sense of community and belonging for all students. Our next question is, what are some of the opportunities available for future Martys? Now, Eleanor, you mentioned um, sports and cultural activities. Can you tell us a bit more about that? Yes, yeah, so um, I think like we said earlier, even though academics are, I would say, the most important, it is not just all academics when you come to Stellenbosch University. We do offer students a variety of activities that they can, they can partake in. So if you are the sportman of the year or the cultural uh, person, or you might be interested in charity or societies, we do offer it at Stellenbosch University. We've got about 30 sports codes that you can participate in, and 10 of these sport codes are high, um, high performance sport codes like your rugby, cricket, athletics, netball, etc. And then we've got the cultural um, opportunities. Um, I, I'm not sure if you are aware. If you haven't listened to Stellenbosch University Choir, please go onto YouTube, uh, do yourself a favor and go listen to the choir. So Stellenbosch University Choir has been awarded, I think eight times uh, world champions in the league that they uh, participate in. We've got a cappella if you want to partake in a jazz band, etc. Um, there is cultural opportunities also on campus and then we've got about 60 societies in which you can participate now i'm not going to mention all of the societies but for example we've got like a dance society that's for students that love dancing an echo society students that's interested in maybe uh, learning another language there's language societies um, and a poor society that's for students that take uh, dogs to disabled people to help them a bit with uh, rehabilitation etc so there is various of these opportunities on campus and at Stellenbosch University hmm. okay so clearly being a Marty is more than just about academics there's so much for you to participate in and um, really just gather with other students who share similar interests okay where can I see fees or estimated fees for next year? Um, Angelique, uh, fees or estimated fees can be seen online. So um, students can go on to www.martis.com. They can go on the drop down uh, fees and there is an option for an estimate quotation. So it will ask you your basic information, what are you going to study, in which faculty will you study, and then also the modules that you will register for. Most of the programs will uh, tell you which is the compulsory modules and which is the elective modules. You will then select your compulsory as well as your elective modules. 
you will also be able to uh, select if you're going to stay in res or not and that will then give you an estimate or a quotation a pdf file that you can print with the estimated um, amount of the study fees um, if you can't do the quotation or you're struggling with that you can just go on to google and uh, type in Stellenbosch university fees there is also a link that will take you to the basic study fees of the university i just want to emphasize that that document is really just the basics it will give you a good understanding but it's not necessarily the nitty gritty and um, residence placement in detail but you can find that online as well okay thank you so much eleanor all right next question is what about campus safety is your campus safe we could so what would you say about campus safety <laughs> <laughs> okay um as we are well aware um we are living in south africa so yes. uh, wherever you go you need to be vigilant um, and make sure that you are responsible for your personal safety even if you travel overseas you always have to be to be vigilant so when you come to Stellenbosch University you must be vigilant and then um, we do have so how do also oh, I wanted to say how do you become vigilant you must make sure that to keep your valuables out of sight and then um, remain aware of your surroundings and then also try not to walk alone at night so that you are safe and then we do have campus security it is a department or a division here at Stellenbosch University that helps students staff members as well as visitors to ensure safety for everyone to ensure a safe environment for us all and then they do patrol the university so guys as we are well aware there is load shading you know even though they're patrolling you must also make sure you walk in uh, places where it is safe so you must also play your part and work with them and then which which services do they offer maybe you're wondering what can they do for you if you come to Stellenbosch University well there is a safety escort at night so if maybe you are studying at a library it's late um, anytime between 8 p.m. and 5 a.m. Um, you can ask security to escort you to your residence so that you feel safe and then there is also a campus shuttle service that will be transporting students that are parking at far away uh, parking areas and then we are also advised lastly to make sure that we use safe routes or streets for example the best streets to use when you come to Stellenbosch University will be Victoria Street and Bosman Street you can forget other streets but not these two okay <laughs> <laughs> yeah so that's how you can be safe at Stellenbosch University Great, thank you so much, Brikutsu, and that is so true. While we have campus security present um, all over campus, it is also important um, that you take responsibility for your safety as well. Okay, are there still any bursaries that students can apply for? So we know that bursaries can be a barrier for students entering higher education. So Brikutsu, are there any more bursaries that they can still apply for? Yes, um, we offer what we call is the partial cost bursaries for students that come from households with an income of 350000 to 600000 um, And then they, the bursaries can be applied on the student portal. And then, uh, yeah, you need to fill in your information and then submit everything. And then if you qualify for the bursary, we will get back to you. And then another bursary that we have, or more bursary information, can be found on the website by clicking on the uh, Stellenbosch bursary calendar to see the different types of bursaries that are available. So we have the uh, Stellenbosch funding. Um, we have the external donor bursaries, family bursaries, private and corporate trust as well and then please note that each bursary has its own criteria and closing date so you would have to just check when are the closing dates so that you don't miss out on this great opportunity and with most of them especially the Stellenbosch University uh, bursaries they will be closing on the 30th of November so you still have a bit of time to sort that out and then lastly oh sorry not lastly but we also have merit bursaries um, with merit bursaries you don't apply we will look at your results and if we are impressed with your results we will let you know there are 
automatically allocated by our faculties so don't apply we will get back to you right and then lastly we have the national student financial aid scheme um, this one it's a full course bursary that is offered by the government uh, and it is for students from households with an income of 350,000 and below um, so the bursaries are we're opened on the 28th of September, so you can still apply for them if you qualify for that, okay? Okay, so there are still a few avenues for you to pursue um, funding opportunities. The next question is also relating to finances, and it says, does class fees include textbooks, or and also, does residence fees include meals? Uh, um, <laughs> yes, thank you, um, Angie. Uh, class fees, no. The class fees does not include the textbooks. Textbooks um, you should buy separately. separately. So normally I recommend to first year students to not come to campus and immediately ask the list of the textbooks. Normally you um, get it at welcoming or when the, the classes start. Do not just go in and buy all the textbooks. There are quite a lot of avenues and uh, websites and Facebook pages where you can buy second-hand textbooks for much cheaper than uh, new textbooks. For some of the modules that you will do, you might only use four or five chapters in the textbooks and not, not necessarily the entire textbook. So first come to campus, familiarize yourself with campus, start classes and then see if you can't buy a second-hand textbook before you just go and buy new textbooks. Great, thanks, Eleanor. Oh, can I add? Sure. And we also have a, a, a bookshop so that you can buy them on campus at the Nelsey. So you don't have to stress about going to far away mall. So everything yes. will be accessible here on campus. Yes, yeah. thank you for adding that, Boyko. So we've got um, quite a few uh, shops for, for textbooks, for students to buy textbooks on campus. Okay. Are there any specific programs or initiatives to help prospective first years be more prepared to join university? I don't know, I think uh, this particular question relates to our online boarding program. Can you tell us a bit more about that? Yes, um, Angie, so um, next year, 2023, will be the first year that Stellenbosch University will do an online onboarding program. Um, this will possibly be after the metric results has been written, so it's done with you done with the metric results. This onboarding uh, program, you will have the opportunity to see more about campus, um, uh, uh, photo photographs of campus, see the different f faculties, where the faculties are on campus, uh, the NLC, the sciences, faculties, agri sciences, etc. This also gives you an opportunity to start interacting with mentors or uh, student support and just for yourself to familiarize yourself with campus and the environment before you actually um, step foot on campus. So it will be online after you completed your matric um, exams, but we will publish um, the exact time that you can go onto the online on onboarding program closer to the time. Okay, thanks, Eleanor. What is the welcoming program and when will it take place? So the welcoming program, that is so exciting and I really encourage students to partake in the welcoming program. The welcoming program is normally a week where students are on campus, so now you must be here. You either left home or you, like I say, studying out of the house or took the plane from Durban or Pretoria or Limpopo and now you are on campus. The welcoming program is to help students to feel uh, obviously at home and help you to get to know campus and uh, this is academic as well as social activities that takes place during this welcoming program. And I do think the highlight is the um, when we finish off the week and all the students come together at the Donny Craven Stadium and they do the dream walk down Victoria Street. There's that important street again. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it is quite a magic moment, I, I believe, for the students as well as the parents. And we also, you know, normally tell the students to write a dream on a, on a cart and put it against a tree. 
So um, the welcoming uh, program normally starts uh, the 2nd of February or next year it will be the 2nd of February and uh, welcoming for law students will already start the 31st of January. So students must, must make sure that by that time they are on campus. And I just want to emphasize again, please attend all the programs for the welcoming uh, week. It's extremely important because after that classes start and then if you're not sure where your classes are, where the facilities that you need to be at, it's quite difficult to run around between classes to figure out where you must be and what you must have to attend classes. Okay, there you have it. So next year, some uh, initiatives or programs to look out for will be the online onboarding program as well as the welcoming event. Um, and I agree with Eleanor, it is an exciting time um, to be involved with the welcoming program and get orientated to, to the campus. Next question is, what does, when, sorry, when does the university's classes officially start? Um, Angelique, currently we are still in the process of finalizing the academic calendar for 2023, but it will possibly be around the 13th of February. So um, again, prospective students must just uh, keep an eye on the, uh, obviously we will publish the dates, but currently it will look like the 13th of, November, uh, the 13th of February 2023 um, classes will start. Perfect. And I'm sure many of you cannot wait for that day oh, yeah. to, to come. <laughs> okay, so diarize that day. The 13th of February is when classes will begin. Where do I find yearbooks to my subject combos? Okay, so this is a very valuable resource. Where exactly can students find this resource? So, um, Angelique, again, students can go onto our website, www.martis.com. And normally, uh, for me, the easiest place to find the yearbook is either if you are on our homepage, on the right-hand side of the homepage, there is a search button where you can search yearbooks, or just beneath the search button, there is a, um, interesting topics or relevant topics drop-down. You can click on that drop-down, and there you will also find the faculty yearbooks. You will then be uh, taken to a page where all the faculties where will be on the page. You will click on the faculty that you are going to study within and there will be all the programs. What's very nice about the faculty yearbook, it will give you the modules that you do in your first year, second year, third year. It will also give you the uh, postgraduate options within that faculty. And just something else for the students or prospective students to know is at the back of this booklet, the faculty yearbook, there is an explanation of exactly what that module entails. So if you, for example, going to do psychology 114, you can go to the back of the book and see what will I be studying or learning in psychology 114. Okay, and then in addition, another simpler method is on the website, you just click on what can I study, you select the, the, the faculty and then select the program, and then you will see that it will, as you are reading, it will say calendar, it's a link, it's in bold, underlined, and then you click on that, that's also the easiest way to find the yearbook, and then as you scroll down, you will see all the modules for the program that you're interested in studying. Okay, fantastic, thank you so much. Okay. Is there Wi-Fi on campus? <laughs> yes, yes, and yes, and it's for free. <laughs> so you will be connected 24 hours, um, 27, how many, 24 hours, seven days a week, yes. 365 days if you are not, if you don't want to go back home over the holidays, so it is accessible. Okay, yes, thank you so much. Wi-Fi is vital in this day and mm. age. <laughs> okay. Is a car practical for a first year or necessary? What would you say? Nope, you don't not really, so not so much, um, especially mm. if you are studying here at Stellenbosch, um, everything is within work, working distance. I'd say rather get a bicycle, you'll be healthier. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and you need to save on fuel, so yeah. if you want something that is going to be more practical, rather get a bicycle or a skating board, yes. Yeah, um, so we most of most of us are even walking. Uh, most of our students, you know, they prefer to walk. So 
let's prefer let's u- let's use you know easier options and yeah. that are healthier for us so yes. trust me you will need to take those walks after those long exam nights <laughs> and days yeah I totally agree because I mean we are such a beautiful campus as well so walking to get to your class or to the mall is such a pleasure mm. okay so our next question is just to confirm um, does SU and NS first bursaries are they are they still open okay so are our SU bursaries or NASA's bursary applications open at the moment yes or no yes they are still open so our SU bursaries will be closing on the 30th of November and then the Nestos bursaries are open they open on the 28th of September so you can go to the Nestos website and just check when is the closing date but I'd advise that the sooner you apply the better so that you're on top of the list um, because it's a lot of students that apply for these bursaries okay great so there really are so many avenues for funding and i'll just emphasize this again um, on our martis.com website you will find a career guidance program on which you'll find the go study website and this has uh, this is a wealth of information this this particular website the go study website has a wealth of information for bursaries and also if you're looking to find out a bit more about different occupations and what they entail it's also a good resource to look into and then of course you can also find private funding opportunities on zabursaries.co.za okay confirmation if you already matriculated mm. you have a final offer <coughs> conditional offer just for current matriculants yes. um, okay I and know. yeah I think um, the the question is if I already matriculated and I applied with my grade 12 results and I have received an offer from the university what now mm-hmm. if you've received an offer from the university that is your final offer you don't have to submit anything you will not get another offer you will just wait for registration because we've already received your um, matric results and you've applied with that. So for those students, you can just relax and look at the dates for when you can come and register at the university. So all we're saying is congratulations. You yes. are going to be a student at Stellenbosch University in the year 2023. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the next question coming in says, uh, okay, so this one is about the applicant portal okay so the applicant portal is something that is used specifically for communicating um, the status of application um, to students Um, so I don't know if if you'd like to just elaborate on that I I think yeah it's just important for students to uh, prospective students to know that all your communication and your status will be on the application portal so it is your responsibility to to frequently log on to your portal to see what is your status, especially when the metric results have been released. So this is now for current grade 12s to um, go onto your portal, all the communication with regards to final offers, also with regards to residence placements, etc. will be communicated via this portal. So all the information will be on that portal. Okay, fantastic. Okay, oh, I'm just so yes. in addition, you they must you must you guys must also check your emails mm. and then we will also send SMS. So don't change your numbers between now and January next year, guys. All right? Yeah. Please keep it that same number because everything will be communicated on the information that we have at Stellenbosch. Okay. Wicked, so that is good advice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Please keep your contact details the same or at least um, check it regularly, your email, your cell phone, whatever the case may be. Now, I know that there, there were many questions that came through this evening and thank you so much for taking the time to send through those questions. Some of the, your questions were very specific. Um, so for those of you who have questions, who sent through your questions and we didn't get around to answering them, please do um, get in touch with us after this evening's session. So 
you will find our contact details on the slide that will be um, coming up soon where you can contact us um, telephonically by email or on WhatsApp and we will be available um, to answer all of those wonderful questions that you have. So we are nearing the end of this evening session um, but I would like to encourage you to please um, join your faculty sessions which will take place at half past seven. Um, you can join the faculty sessions by clicking on the link that was emailed and SMS to you. Also, don't forget to join in your faculty's live Q&A session throughout this week um, as well. Okay, but for now, I would like to wish you on behalf of all my colleagues, we would like to wish you all all the best for the rest of your academic year work hard stay fo stay focused you're almost there you've got one foot in the door keep up the good work and um, enjoy the rest of this evening's sessions keep keep well take care thank, thank you, you. Thank you. <laughs>